Good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you are. At the time of this recording, this is episode 171 of the Restricted Zone Podcast, man. The basketball episode, we're bringing it to you, man, with the heat. We're bringing it with the whole crew. Kyrie, introduce yourself to the people out here, man. It's been a long time. Yo, what's going on, fellas? What's going on, viewers? Glad to be back, man. Glad to give y'all some new content, some new NBA content, bro. Let's get to it, man. Come on, man. Come on. Johnny Boy, Johnny. Let's get it. Did you start to the subscribers and the people out there, man? Hello, world. Just Johnny tapping back in again, baby. Just Let's an get it. analyst, not Let's an advocate. Get it. Remember, people, still just an analyst, not an advocate. <laughs> What's this? Did y'all see it? I saw it, Brody. <laughs> and we got Rick. He's a former member of the pod now at this point. We love him. He's in the chat talking this shit now. So we got to bring him on as a official part of the crew. Rick, can you introduce yourself to the people and subscribers out here, man? How's everybody doing? I'm hoping everyone can enjoy the content. Uh, I'm glad to be here to talk about basketball. And I'm looking forward to covering any topics as, as we get prepared for this season. So I hope everybody enjoys. Exactly. I want to piggyback just off what you said, Rick. You said it was before the season started. The season was right around the corner. NBA media day was yesterday. Literally, you got that little preview with sneak peek of all your favorite teams, franchises, players, and et cetera. And we're going to keep it going with the basketball next week. Be on the lookout, turn on the post notifications because it's going to be episodes dropping football, baseball, and basketball. So be on the lookout. Stay in tune with that. So with that being said, Kyrie. I'm going to jump into it. I'm going to start off with uh, the Ken Bay McTumble. First and foremost, RIP to the Ken Bay McTumble, one of the most iconic figures in terms of the defensive end and just what he brought to the game of basketball in terms of his personality, character. You know, we all know the finger. We all know that. But it's what he's done off the court, too, that makes him seriously a more endearing human being, how he's provided for his country, went back to his country, expanded the game of basketball in his country. And, you know, he's done a lot for the uh, global, NBA global. Yeah, I, I know I'm pronouncing him wrong. You guys help me out, NBA global. So he's been a major ambassador, contributor about that. And, you know, like I said, he's been such a major impact on and off the court. And, you know, the Kimmy McTumble, man, Hall of Famer, legend, everything above, one of the best defensive players of the game ever team. R.I.P. to him, rocking both his two family, his loved ones, Ryan, but Tumble, his son, his, you know, his whole family, you know. So R.I.P. to the Kevin McTumble, but he's in a better place, and we're going to keep uh, all his highlights, his career, his accomplishments in good memory. Kyrie, and can hang it up to you. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, It was devastating news uh, yesterday, getting the news that the Kevin McTumble had passed. Um, he was, I believe, 58 years old, which – you would still think he has a lot in the tank at that point. But um, unfortunately, he had uh, brain cancer. And, um, you know, at a certain point with certain stuff like that, there's not much that can happen. But um, the, with, with the K-Main Matumbo, with guys like in our generation, we didn't really get to see him in his prime, so to say, with the Denver Nuggets and uh, with the Atlanta Hawks and, and, and uh, with the Sixers when they went to the finals with AI and whatnot. But um, we knew his impact once we became fans, and we knew – I remember seeing him play with the Rockets on his last um in his last few years. Um and anytime he came in the game, he still was impactful and he was still always, he was talked upon so highly. Um, whether it was players being interviewed or whether it was commentators and, and that sort. And that just let me know from an early age and from like an early stage in my fandom of this game that the Kim and Matumbo is very much respected and he's respected as much as a as a as a hooper and as a legend. Um, comparative to him as a human being, he is, he's just as much respect and he's just as much love. Um, you mentioned it, Colin, how much he's given back to the continent of, of Africa, not just with basketball, but just humanitarian services and resource wise as well. The, just um, always giving back and always going back and reaching out to the communities out there and stuff like that and being tangible. That's one thing I always thought and always admired about seeing the Cayman Matumbo's that he was so tangible, he was so personable. personable. Um, with the people that he contacted with, it always made us. He always had seemed like he knew them for 10, 15 years, whether it was a little kid or, or a grown man meeting him. He always made them feel comfortable, and uh, that's one thing I'll always remember about him. And one thing I'll always take from him in my personal life to try to try to move and try to try to be a man because that's 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 what it's all about moving with love and moving with care and moving with 
not selfish intent, care about those around you. And Dikembe was the embodiment of that. And um, yeah, man, on a basketball tip, I just wanted to say like one of my favorite memories of him that I unfortunately wasn't, a part, I don't think I was even born to watch was him and his Denver Nuggets team um, being the eighth seed, overtaking that Seattle Supersonics team with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp in five games. And just that image of Dikembe with the ball on the floor, like embracing it, just, just soaking it all in, bro. Like that's one moment like in basketball history, like like anytime I see that highlight, I get chills. Like, yo, like that it's just that moment is so surreal. And just knowing the type of player he was all the way back from his days at Georgetown up to the, his later days. He played with passion. He played with intensity and he, he never took a playoff and, and that that uh contributed to his Hall of Fame career and being one of the best defensive players this game's ever seen. So rest in peace to him, man. It's a shame. 110 percent, Kyrie. I couldn't agree with you more, especially his impact, especially the iconic moments that you talked about with the Nuggets and being the eighth seed and doing what they do, man. Uh, it, it's just a long list of things we could go through about his accomplishments. Johnny, I'm gonna swing it to you for giving it all on, you know, the Hall of Fame and I, uh, icon to Kevin McTumble with those big game basketball. Well, being uh, a little bit of an old timer myself. I remember I was about ninth grade. I was either 13 or 14 in that 2001 NBA Finals run with my 76ers. So I remember as a, as a kid just watching Matumbo that entire year, winning that Defensive Player of the Year award. And just it was AI on offense and just Matumbo on defense. And you just you just saw the jerseys, bro. And Man, I I remember just like he was just that anchor that helped us get to the finals. And I just, I just, oh, if Shaq wasn't Shaq, bro, I promise you. If Shaq wasn't Shaq, I promise you. <laughs> but at the at the end of the day, he even Tumbo, he had that little sky hook. He played well, he played tough, but I, I always admired his heart. I always admired his heart. The spirit of Philadelphia, all the one thing about us is if you play with some heart and you show it and leave it out on the floor. We're going to notice it. We're going to respect you forever. We're going to love you forever for it. And Matumbo always going to have a place in our rafters. He always going to have a place in our city. Like um, like you said, that like the career, the, and, and just a pioneer in and of itself. Like he kicked the doors in for the Joel Embiid's that we see today. Uh, Luau Dangs, the Ananobis, all, all the players of African descent. He was one of the original pioneers of overseas players to come over in this league and make an impact. And the fact that he just anchored that and what it just started and, be, and this league became so international and he had a part in that, it was just amazing to see, bro. So, but I, I felt like personally, the, the news the news kicked me right in my butt. I was like, what, brain cancer? I didn't even know he had that. Like, they kept that under wraps. Uh, like, I thought he was just retired and just living well and continued to just making an impact in his country because we all know he's a god in Congo. I think that's where he's from, but... Mm -hmm. Like yeah, bro. Um, that that news hit me. I didn't even know. He, I didn't. Know, I didn't even know he was diagnosed with it. So um, yeah. R.I.P. to him, bro. Like uh, a straight up legend. R.I.P. to him, a straight legend indeed, man. Uh, man, it's tough, man. Really heavy. Rick, I'm gonna swing to you before we move on to the next part of the episode. Just give us your thoughts and memories of you know Kevin McCumble, you know, and what he meant to the game of basketball from your perspective. So uh, yeah, appreciate it. And um, just to follow up a uh, great analysis and breakdown from uh, from everyone here, um, speaking on the Kemi Matumbo, you know, RIP. Um, and I too was also shocked also when I saw you know 58 years old, uh, brain cancer. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten really to see much of the Kemi Matumbo. I probably saw the back end of his career when I got into the game of basketball, probably in his uh, Rockets days. But um, for what I've, I've seen and, and heard about the Kemi, you know, such a great dude, and I'm very big on. When the game is, you know, kind of international in a way, you know, not really just about the guys that play the game and they from the states, but actually the guys international, internationally, and um, you know, especially players who are big on the court and off the court, you know, be, as you said, you know, being kind of about being, you know, kind of global, like an ambassador, you know, off the court of the game, but really, you know, what a great Hall of Fame type of player, defensively especially, you know, having a player like that to be in the paint. I think he's among the top leaders that play the game in blocks. I mean, if you just watch, after, you, after I heard the news, I literally had to go and just watch some highlights about him playing, watching some of these blocks and the impact of the game that he had 
defensively, you know, just the presence of being in the paint, knowing that, you know, for guard or anyone's coming down from the perimeter, you got that type of shot blocker that was down in the paint. And, you know, I bet players like, for example, who most recently um, are not in the game no more, like a Sergi Baca, for example, they called him Sergi Baca. I bet a player like him probably, you know, paid his respects to watching a player like Dikembe Mutombo. Well, really, what a great player. I'm very sad to hear when I saw the news about it being 58 with brain cancer. I had no idea even about that, but what a great Hall of Fame uh, player defensively. Absolutely. I couldn't agree anymore with you, Rick. I mean, seriously, what a career. Uh, and, and, you know, his, his passing also taught me to cherish life once again, many times, to cherish life because tomorrow is not promised. Certainly not promised. So, all the better be grateful for what we do, though, apparently. So, right now, since I'm losing every single one of you guys, just to thank once again from all of us, all our people to Matumbo, to his family, seems like I'm going to this, and brighter days, and peace, happiness with you guys, much more. All right, guys. Uh, it's, you know, we're still going to be a little bit, you know, it's still a tough episode, man, because, you know, uh, we're going to talk about someone's retirement, and he's another one, man, and so me and Kyrie talked about this. You know, I told him how much this guy made me a super fan of basketball. He still, I still defend this guy religiously, right? I still do. And Derrick Rose, man. Derrick, Derrick Rose retired from the league. Did he retire on Monday or was it Saturday? It was Monday. This Monday or was it Friday? No, nah, it was a it was a couple of days. It was, it was a, I think it was I Thursday or Friday. Something. It was like Thursday or Friday. Right. Because he got waived. The um the Grizzlies had waived him the day before. At, at yeah, he asked the Grizzlies to waive him. He yeah. asked him to waive him. Okay, so and you know I I just been dying to do an episode on these. I knew first thing I was gonna do an episode on Derrick Rose because he means so much to me in general. Because, you know, he got me into the game. Like, I was a fan. I told you, Kyrie, John Calipari, him, John Calipari and Derrick Rose are the kind of, like, the guys that kind of really made me invest in the game. I loved the game. I watched it casually with my older, older siblings. But it was just something about watching Derrick Rose. And my older brother watched college. Watching Derrick Rose move on board. It was like, listen, and I've been following D. Rose such a fan, and, you know, we see him retired now. It's for the speed. I mean, I could go on and on, but I want to leave the floor for you guys. I mean, I, I want to start with you, Kyrie. Just, um, go ahead. Give me your thoughts on D-Rose retirement. The Rose that grew from concrete, man. Yeah, bro, that punched me right in the childhood. I ain't even going to lie to y'all. Like, just see, like, seeing the wave, like, the wave notification the day before, it's kind of like, all right, it, it, it's getting there. And then, like, he, he officially announced it the day after, and it's just like, damn. But it's just like, that's, like, that's, it, it is what it is. Like, we're we getting older, and our and our favorite players that we grew up watching are starting to, re- are getting older as well, and they're starting to retire and whatnot. But I don't think anything is going to hurt as much as D. Rose retiring. And this is a guy who just watched his favorite player, Carmelo Anthony, retire the year before. Because Derrick Rose, we... It's obvious, like, we didn't get to see everything we could have got out of Derrick Rose. And he was headed on, he was on a path to greatness. Like, youngest MVP ever, to, uh, to, I think, uh, rookie of the year in his draft class. The hometown, we talked about it yesterday, Colin, the hometown kid, number one pick headed to his hometown. And he he had it all going for himself. He seemed to improve every year up, in, up into that, uh, up until that 2012 season. And, um, he he set the path. He was one of the first guys that we seen at the point guard position put so much pressure on the rim and do it in such an acrobatic way, being able to adjust his body midair, take contact, adjust the body midair, manipulate the ball. I swear I was there rose on the court, man. I promise you. I, we, we, I mean, if, if you even had a half a half an ounce of his athleticism, you was lucky, bro. Because <laughs> he, the way he glided through the air – was so much force and so much power, like it. It was so, it was unreal. Like it, we didn't see, we didn't, we didn't watch point guards like that coming up. I mean, yeah, we had Baron Davis. Um, there it, it was some guys, Steve Francis, but Derrick Rose. It was something different about him, and it was something. It was his whole demeanor, everything. It was something different about Derrick Rose and the way. He and, and that, and, and I love. I'm sorry to cut you off. I wanted piggy bang what you said the most. One thing that made me even more of a fan was how he carried himself. You all know that me, that viral video with 
Dwight, LeBron, they all, yeah, fucked up, D-Rose, like, I love that. That's the type yeah. of guy I am. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. But, yeah, bro, like, and then, it's, it's just like when it comes to him and it comes to that injury, like the first ACL injury, I remember exactly where I was watching that game when I was in eighth grade. And the feeling, the pitfall in my stomach, like, yo, this this my this my change this probably changed some shit. Like it was it, it it was so surreal. And just to see him try to come back and get to back to that point year after year after sitting out the year in 2012, 2013, coming back and getting hurt again. And I'm um, eventually moving on to the Bulls to my New York Knicks, which I, I loved and appreciated him his whole time there. But he never got to be that Derrick Rose. He never got to be that – even got a chance to sniff another MVP award or to get an all-star game. And um, it's sad, bro. Like, it's sad. It, it makes you – it makes you kind of cognizant of the, uh, the the pain people went through watching Penny Hardaway back in his day, right after Shaq left and him getting hurt. and Or, or Grant Hill going through multiple knee injuries after him being uh, pawned as the next Jordan. But going through all those knee injuries and not really getting to see him reach that full potential and become a journeyman throughout his career and more like a utility, but like a backup point guard. And um, it hurt because we knew he was more than that. We knew he was destined to be more than that. But nonetheless, we respect him and we love him because of his perseverance. And um, he came back and made himself a nice career anyway. You remember that 50-point game he had with the Timberwolves? He uh, broke down on the court crying, talking about how much he, he – he, worked and worked and worked and grinded just to get back on the floor and to even make somewhat of an impact. And um, he, he did it for a while, man. He did it. He, he, he did it, bro. And uh, you can't help but be proud of him and wish him a happy retirement. Oh, on that note, man, can't help but be proud of the man. Johnny, I'm swinging it to you, man. You wearing the jersey with this man's life-changing, you know, energy had been found out of the floor. Johnny got me a little bit, you know, in and out my floor a little bit. I don't yeah. know. The girl, Johnny, the floor is yours. I mean, I mean you, never want, you, you never want this outcome to happen. I'm glad my Sixers won that series, but, I mean, it was to no avail in, uh, in, the, in the long run anyway. But, no, seriously. Uh, no, nah, I'm telling you, man, I'm, uh, there, I, two things with Derrick Rose. I'm going to go before the injury first. Derrick Rose before the injury, like you said, Kyrie, I've, let me see, um, I'm probably like in my er, probably like late, late teens, early 20s, just watching good old playoff basketball. I believe it's the triple overtime game, Chicago Bulls, and who was that? Oh, the Celtics. We really put the Celtics in seven yes, games. Sir. Ricky, I remember yes, that. I remember that. Watched every game. I said, oh. I, and, when, and when I say the emotions that I went through just as a basketball fan, watching the greatness and, and the, the, just the young talent and athleticism and just finishing ability and just fearlessness of this just young kid, I said, who would – I'm talking bowl cut Derrick Rose. Y'all need to go look him up, <laughs> young kids. Look up baggy Rose jersey and all. Like, baggy I'm jersey and all. Baggy jersey. I'm talking <laughs> and before the jump shot had to develop, bro. And I'm telling you, bro, it's like I, I, it's you're in awe. You will be in awe, bro. It's just I. I'm, I'm still in awe. I still watch his highlights. Re- 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 reverse layups from like the foul line, bro, or during near the dotted line. It's weird. It was really weird. But I'm just saying, just the competitive nature that he showed. People talk about the the Ben Gordon, the UConn matchup between Ben Gordon and Ray Allen, between Boston and Chi-Town, that little positional matchup. I was looking at Derrick Rose and how he just was the main anchor. Just, I remember. And the Ray Rondo was going at it. Absolutely, bro. And Derrick Rose, just, he just came out. And from there, I just started watching him. And um, I'm just telling you, when I, I, was just, I, I was scared. I was scared to my wits when my sisters were messed up with those Chicago Bulls. But um, even, I, that, was, that, was, that was one point. My other part um, is Derrick Rose after the injury. The mindset that you guys spoke of, that's another thing I learned about him, is um, not many players come back like the way he did, honestly, or can they come back, period. Like you said, he had that 50-point game. He developed, and not just, not just that little stint, just leading up to how he developed his game post-injury. He got a better jump shot. He got more mature. 
his passing ability got better. He, he still was able to get in the paint. He developed the floater. He still became, he, he still was able to be a contributor and a respectable player. And at the same time, it still hurts to see what he could have been, bro. Because I, I, like I said, man, I just want to go back to just how we watched him come up. Youngest MVP, the, the why not me slogan. And just the humble interviews, man. It just, just him on the court was just a whole nother animal. And yeah, for him to retire, like it hit me the same way, Kai. It hit me the same way, bro. And I was like, man, bro, like we really get no, like these, these players are going. Like I, it's, it's really over. Like Derrick Dude. Rose retiring. He still seemed like he had a couple years left in the tank, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like, he even, said, even in his last season with us, with the Knicks. He he was getting in for like spot minutes and stuff, but a lot of those times he was he was he was putting in work. He was doing his thing. He was productive. Yeah, bro. I'm gonna miss him. I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna miss him. I ain't never seen athleticism like that before, bro. Like this, I, I'm telling you, dog. He just that Steve Nash dunk. Oh my god. That dunk of Gordon Dodge. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. I still, yo, when I tell you I watch his highlights to this day, I still watch his highlights. Like I might catch myself being bored and I'll pull up the Rose highlights and watch. Like, I just know that that's neat. You can go all the way back to Simeon, too. Them Simeon highlights. Yeah, all right. Yo, listen, split, split. I was about to say, uh, Rick, come on, man. The platform is yours. Just talk about joining some the nostalgia of talking about the roads that grew from concrete. Great roads, man. Man, look, great, great breakdown analysis from, from everyone uh, listening here by Derek Rose. And, you know, the way I look at Derek Rose and the way I'm going to cover uh, this part of the um, conversation really is, it hits you within like a retirement type injuries, like how you watch the game. And and like Johnny was saying, and you know, Kyrie, like, you know, it, it makes us feel like we get no, you know, as we watch these players, you know, and it really shows us that, you know, no matter if it's a favorite player or not, or, you know, say for example, like LeBron, you know, being in your 22nd year, like, you know, we got to enjoy the greatness of the players that were watching before they actually retire and leave the game. You know, whether it's LeBron, KD, Curry, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, they're getting up there, and it shows us that, you know, we got to enjoy the game with these players before they get out. And, you know, I tell you, Derrick Rose, you know, watching, you know, before I was even a fan of any favorite teams, just watching him as a young player when he came in the league, you know, obviously the one thing that strikes you really is the, the uh, athleticism. You're watching him, young in his career, the playoffs. I mean, just watching someone that can be that explosive get to the rim and really having that acrobatic style type of finishing, switching the hands, everything. Like, you know, you could watch Russell Westbrook get to the rim, and he gives those thunderous dunks. But, man, with Derrick Rose, you know, he'll dunk, but just the way he finished. You no, know, we watched Kyrie, but just the way Derrick Rose will finish at the rim, it was just something special. Fantastic. It was right. just, you know, I, st- I think I remember if there was a game uh, back there when Corby was playing. I believe it was the Bulls and the Lakers, if I remember correctly, Christmas Day. Um, I believe that was the game. I believe he hit the game. Went and shot if I remember correctly. Yep. But he he had some very, Derrick Rose, very special moments. And, you know, I, I just recently watched again the breakdown about when he got the call and everything happened from, uh, I believe, the trade with the Knicks happened. About yeah. Mm-hmm. He was very In the you know, I'm sure he didn't want to leave his home in Chicago knowing that. But I feel like part of that inside of him, too, you know, was probably maybe like a nervous part. Like, wow, like, you know, I'm getting shipped out of my home, but I'm going for another opportunity to New York, though, to get a chance there. That happened. Phil Jackson was over there, brought him over, brought Joe Kim Noah over there. You know, it was good to see him, you know, in the garden try to do something there. And um, being a, obviously a fan, I watched a lot of basketball, but watching the Knicks, you know, Derrick Rose had some great moments. <laughs> With the Knicks, and you know, the one thing I'll remember with Derrick Rose being with the Knicks, and it was special watching him, and I think anyone of the game of basketball and any fan should have enjoyed what I believe is one of the last type of runs that he had was that playoff series against the Atlanta Hawks. You know, yes. just atmosphere in the moments. You know, we, we, we know <laughs> we'll get to Julius Randle in the trade. You know, no knock on Julius Randle. I'm just speaking from a Derrick Rose standpoint. Derrick Rose. The performance that he played in that series and just step up and be a number one for the Knicks in, in that moment right there, we, we all had to enjoy that. I mean, that was special. Thibs put him in. He's hitting threes. He's getting to the – like, you know, it, it's not a throwback to Derrick Rose, but it's like – was It wasn't prime there, Rose, but he was able to turn the clock just, just enough. At that moment, I was like, wow, we really – Derrick Rose. And, you know, I, I, I credit – I'll always credit somebody – 
you know, no matter having injuries and battling for your career, no matter what you do, your, uh, your occupation in life, whether you play a sport or not, you know, mm-hmm. you know, let's keep going and going. You know, he's going from team to team to team at this point. He was on the Knicks twice, having a 50-point game. And, like, just going around the league. You know, you keep getting these opportunities and chances, and you try to make the best of them. But, you know, overall standpoint, like, you know, shout out to Derrick Rose. I'm a very shout out to Derrick Rose. Man. When I saw that he got away from the Grizzlies, I was hoping that it wasn't the end. Maybe a contending team will pick him up, maybe on the bench. You know, he might not play a lot. You know, maybe a contending team, or I don't know if he would have went on one of the lower tier teams going into the season, maybe a Washington Wizards, Brooklyn Nets. Or- I wouldn't even want him on there. But at really that point, like, yeah, he, 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 it was decision was made and it was time to go. But I mean, what a special career with Derrick Rose. But it would just show you that, you know, just always respect the game and, and watch these players as they keep going because the seasons go the way they play. You never know when you could get hurt. Uh, for example, uh, Kawhi Leonard, he's my favorite player uh, for a while now. And mm-hmm. just to, and that's a perfect example, an injury prone type of player. And it's a shame. You get you every year, every year. You have players trying to bail, but you know they're just not available. You don't know like what you can get from players who start getting hurt, and it takes away a lot of what you enjoy in the game of players who continue to get hurt. But they're, you know, they're close to getting to the end of the career, or it forces them to try to retirement. But really, just the point is, you know, shout out to Derrick Rose, but really enjoy the game of, of really how it is before these players are really out of the league, though. Hundred man, I can't. I definitely. Echo everything you said, man, to enjoy these guys because you just don't know what can happen to them at any point during the game. So anything can happen to these guys. And uh, you definitely hit it, you know, hit it right home. Um, listen, man, there goes a little out for to be a fan of you. Uh, no matter what you do in life, man, you made me a super fan of basketball. You... Uh, John Wall, you know, those guys, uh, seriously. Uh, my mellow too, made me a fan. Uh, he was the one that got me interested in basketball. My first basketball game was NBA Live 2005. So it was mellow, and then it was D Rose that took it to the top for me, made me a fan, and to the point where I got a podcast with you guys right now. So that's why D Rose mean a lot to me. So that's why, you know, I'll always be a fan of D Rose. So hopefully, he has a Great endeavor, whatever he does outside, you know, from way to basketball. Whether he, you think he'll be an analysis, but I think I think he could be on like a coaching staff for a team. You think so? What do you guys think that? I mean, I, uh, think I he hope could. he's within the league, you know, whether it's an analyst or he gets on the ESPN or a countdown yeah. or one of the, the networks or you know, but I hope he. Um, I hope he tries to stay around the game in some type of way, or, or maybe he, he joins a part of, uh, with the Bulls and does something with the Bulls. But, you know, hopefully he stays within the game. That would be nice to see. Oh, man, on that note, we carried on to the meat and potatoes, the main finish of the episode, the one that rocked the NBA world, man. Enough of the uh, heavy hearts, man. Let's bring it back to the present now, man. Let's talk about... We got two Knicks fans. We got Kyrie and Rick, the two Knicks fans. We got two Sixers fans, me and Johnny. And I'm telling y'all, if we meet y'all in the playoffs, we'll kick y'all ass. But with that being said, we'll go ahead and talk about the trade, though, man. Wait, 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 wait. Nigga, you know you act like you ain't just get clipped, man. Like, like, bro, you not even a couple months removed. We want to kick your ass, though. I don't care. Don't put your head down now, Johnny. Don't oh, nope. pick your ass. What would that be? Tread lightly. Tread lightly. <laughs> y'all think y'all got Paul George? That means something. Y'all still got no oh bank. Y'all still got no oh bank. When he meant the Calvary, he didn't mean it like that. He meant to say, what would we play, each other? What would we play like? How much is he paying Lloyd to come back? How much is he paying Lloyd to come back? I hope he's giving you a nice check, Johnny. I hope he's giving you a nice check. I'm I'm he didn't mean, it like, that. Bro, I, I he didn't mean it like that. He just mean it's it's a lot to discuss. New rosters. We meet. We, right. play, we play at least three to four times a year before the season, before the playoffs even start. So we just yeah. the division, bro. It's well, the division. It's wild. All right, for everybody. That's all he's yo. saying. Yeah. Well, anyway, with that being said, uh, you guys made a big, big trade, man. That shot the NBA world. None of us expected this. Almost like a two K trade, right? Some you do with two K. But it's, it's a reality. Now, I'm going to say this much. I'm going to let the Knicks guys talk. This is really your platform. I'm going to let y'all shine. But I'm going to say this much. As much as I hate to even speak. That's where we'll kick y'all ass. We see y'all in the playoffs. But with that being said, I think y'all won this trade. 
In all honesty, I really think you guys won. Now, for the Wolves, I love Randall, but I don't know how he fits with the Wolves. And I'm going to just leave it at that. And I'm going to swing it to Kyrie first. Then, Brick, I'm going to swing it to you. But Kyrie... Hold on. Right. I, I want to hear, hear Rick first. You want to hear Kyrie? Right, Rick? Because I'm still, uh, like, on the fence. Like, like, okay, like, to let Rick... Right. To me, and Rick talk, me and Rick talk about this. I'm going to let Rick go ahead. Rick, give me your thoughts. Your full thoughts. Who you think won? How did the Knicks improve, in your opinion? Do you think they improved? And, you know, more. I'm actually happy Kyrie offered for me to go first on it. Um, <laughs> I knew you would be. <laughs> I knew you would be, Brody. Um, <laughs> I'm going to speak on, you know, first off, I'm going to say, you know, respect to Julius Randle. Um, I appreciate him coming to the team, to the organization, when he did in 2019, the summer, the same exact day. You know, obviously the Knicks didn't get KD and Kyrie. Them. He came on to the Knicks, I believe, a three-year, 60-mil deal. You know, he got his extension a couple years ago. And, you know, I know Julius Randle, when he was here, he had some some real great moments, good moments. He had some tough moments with the fans. You know, it was some tough interaction with the fans. Obviously, playing in New York, you know, you get that type of interaction with the fans. Uh, but shout out and all respect to uh, Julius Randle, everything he's done within um, on the court, definitely a player on the court and off the court. I actually just helped him with the school in the Bronx to help with a the school there. And then obviously the trade happened. But respect everything he's done on the court and off the court. Um, shout out to him. I wish him nothing but the best going forward. Um, I will say I wasn't – I always thought Julius Friend was a good player. Um, I've never really been too high on watch, just watching him on the Knicks and everything. And I'll translate that, especially, you know, Jalen Brunson came in and I feel like kind of took over. And, you know, just Randall, I feel like he's a player that he'll need the ball in his hands more. Um when I watch his last injury, I, don't, I haven't really never really seen much people really talk about it, too. But I know Julius Randle, when he has the ball in his hands, you know, he wants to try to get, you know, his, his buckets, his points. And I feel like on that last drive before he got hurt, which was obviously the last play, when he got hurt against the Miami Heat in, in the Garden, I really felt that he could have dished that ball to the corner and he chose to kind of go into the paint and attack it. And I really thought that he – I'm watching the game. Like, he could have dished that ball off, and he didn't do it. And you know, obviously that was the injury and everything happened. But um, in terms of really just trying to get into it, I really think that Julius Brandon will need the ball more. But I feel like the Knicks really knew, especially with Isaiah Hartenstein leaving the OKC, he got his three-year contract, that they've kind of felt, and, and the uncertainty right now with Mitchell Robinson. Uh, I, I don't know whether he's getting traded or not. It looks like he might. We'll see, though. But the Knicks getting cat, Carl Anthony Towns from the Timberwolves, you get someone who could play the four and the five. Um, who's going to stretch the court? One of the best shooting bigs, probably one of the best shooting bigs we've seen in the history of the game. Um, he shoots about 40% uh, from the three. Uh, I'm just thinking about how this is going to look on the court, that starting five with the Knicks, and the space that you're now giving Jalen Brunson to attack from the perimeter going to the lane now. He's Carl Anthony Towns is going to be taking that center out, whether it's Joel Embiid or whether you're playing against a Giannis or Brooke Lopez or whoever else they're going to be playing, any center. You're not taking that center out of the paint and potentially one of these end of the game situations too, potentially. You're not taking the center out of the paint, bringing them to the perimeter. The, I'm just thinking about how when James Harden came to Philly, how everyone talked about how a pick and roll and pick a pop could be with James Harden and Joel Embiid. I'm thinking about how this could now look for a Jalen Brunson and Carl Anthony Towns setting screens or rolling or anything like that. But I just think that pick and pop. Oh, shot. He uh, shoots that, crazy. Oh, and we know Cat can shoot from the three and probably a few feet. Let that thing fly. Yeah. And, you know, Julius Rundle wasn't a very good three point shooter. Um, Not a very good three point shooter at all. And you're getting the opposite in someone to call Anthony Towns. You know, he'll get in the rim, you know, give you a little bit of rim protection down there, too. Um, I know that a lot of people talk about, you know, he's too soft to come and play in, in New York and everything. But I think, believe he grew up a Knicks fan. He's from the area. Um, I'm sure he'll probably be happy to come here and play. I don't think he wanted to leave Minnesota, really. Maybe. Who knows with, with Ant. But um, I think, and obviously losing Dante. Uh, losing Dante, yes. it kind of hurts because, you know, the, the record that he broke with the Knicks shooting threes. Um, I'm watching him play. Yeah, uh, Joy watching him play. The, the shots that he hit, he hit some big-time shots for the Knicks. Obviously part of the Nova, uh, the Nova boys on the team. I think the Knicks will find a way to try to – um, find that three and D type of like find that production elsewhere with off the bench with a Deuce McBride. And like I say, having Cat, you have that three point shooting now from the big. 
So you'll have that production coming from Katna who can shoot the three ball also. But, I, you know, it does hurt losing Dante, but I think the Knicks will find a way to get around that. Um, but and part of me is want to say, too, I think it's something that obviously we want to see how the trade, like, like when everyone's on the court playing, how Cat will actually play when he's on the court. So I won't get I want to say the Knicks won the trade, um, but I, it's one of the things where I definitely want to see how it looks on the court and how they keep playing and going along. Um, and on the Julius, just to talk about Julius Randle real quick with the Minnesota Timberwolves, I just want to know how the spacing is going to work, um, how that's going to go, especially with Gobert at the five. But um, I, I'm leaning towards saying the Knicks won the trade, but definitely want to see how it looks on the court. I right, now, Johnny, you and me, we're going to talk from the Minnesota perspective. We're going to let the Knicks fans judge their, their own perspective. Kyrie, I love your analysis, Rick. I think, I, I think losing Dante hurts. But we kind of talk about this, like you guys are really 100% believing in McBride at, at this point. You guys are 100% putting your tips on him. So, hey, man, I don't know if that's it, but like you said, we really got to wait this one out. But Kyrie, this one to you, fellow Knicks here. Yeah, Rick, Rick definitely made a lot of good points. Um, One of them being, like, as far as, like, Dante going, that really hurt me, too. And, um, like, how you break up the Nova Knicks before they even get to play together? Like, it, that 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 hurt me to begin with. And honestly, I was kind of hurt Jules left. And I know a lot like fans, like not even just Knicks fans, fans in general are really split on Julius Randle. Either you like him or you don't like him at all. And um, I was a guy. I've always been a guy that put that really liked Julius Randle since his Kentucky days. And um, I'll always give him his props and appreciate him for coming to the Knicks during a time we were like hot garbage. And he turned us around. Like, he was the cornerstone. He was the main building block of us turning around as an organization. And um, I, don't think he gets, I don't think he gets the credit for that. And um, throughout the years, he's been with us. And um, I, I, even on the pod, I gave him a lot of slack. Because you, you got to – you just – like, Ricky, you know, watching him play can get be very frustrating. And um, there's a lot of times you get really mad at Julius Randle. You, like, his play style, you're just like, oh, this guy. But there's a lot of times you go like, yo – we really needed that extra rebound. We needed that guy to be like, oh, give me the ball right here. I need to get a bucket on the, on the block right now. Like, we, his assertiveness and his aggressiveness, and he really grew as a player with us. We, like, people don't look at his, his, his numbers pre-injury. He put up like 25, 10, and 5. It was playing, it was playing very solid, was, was shooting I, very solid. I, I, I want to hold, hold on. Literally, it was because of that it made me go from 100% Knicks to the winner and then uh. Like 100% Wolves with the loser. To, oh, wait, this guy, as you just said, you mentioned. So that was a great he, point. He, he, met, he was playing fine with, he was playing fine with Bunsen. And there was like, right. little, like jabs and attempts that I peeped. Like, there'd be times where, like, the media and whatnot to make it seem like they have some tension or they, they're not good together. But a lot of that was with RJ Barrett on the floor. And once RJ Barrett was gone, and unfortunately, Emmanuel quickly, another guy I wasn't happy about leaving, but had to happen. Um, once that once they went, Julius Randle and, and Jalen Brunson on the floor together was a lot smoother, so especially with a guy like OG and a newbie that was a reliable knockdown shooter. There was nothing wrong with Julius Randle in New York, is what my um what I'm saying. Yeah, it was was he perfect? Not at all. Was just some things he needed to improve on and be better at if we wanted to compete for a championship? Absolutely. But we can't say we gotta we, we gotta say the same thing about Cat too. Cat in the playoffs has been terrible over, over uh, his whole career. His three, four appearances. We gave him his props in the Denver series. He he did his he did his, he did his thing on Jokic. He, he played he, the first two well. series. The first two series, he played like the number one pick. Yeah, but so, what happened? At, but what happened in Dallas though? I'm not talking about that. I'm saying so. It's just like if we're going to criticize Julius Randle, we got to criticize Cat too, and we got to look at the 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 parts of Cat too that make me as a fan of a fan of our team getting him. Like, oh, like that didn't even really that didn't really need to happen. So with Cat, I think he'll actually fit in really well with us because another thing Ricky had mentioned his outside shooting, the fact that his outside shooting, his volume makes up for Dante being gone, and he's a uh, is. Uh, like it's proven, he's a much better shooter than Julius Randle, so it's a lot easier to form an offense around him because it looks like for us it's just going to be a lot of driving kick, a lot of driving kick, driving kick. Jalen Brunson come down, do get his bucket, 
we seen OG and a newbie come down, be able to get his bucket in the mid range. But it's going to be a lot of drive and kick in this offense. And Carl Anthony Towns, uh, he thr- he will thrive in that. He thrives in that. Be a forty percent three point shooter. He's a guy that can set off ball screens and maneuver around the perimeter while the offense is happening around him and end up with an open three. So I'm not mad at that from from that. I'm not mad at them making the trade from that perspective. Um, being that. He's going to fit in seamlessly with the offense. I have no problem with that. It's defensively where, if you want to compare the two as defenders, it's splitting hairs because they both just as bad. If you want to talk about Jules ball watching, or him like not not just just the effort not being there, not getting back in position, crying to the ref, and then you got Cat on the other hand, horrible at closing out, horrible at closing out, jumps for everything, and he gets in foul trouble easy. That's my biggest thing with Cat. Cat always was, he'd make the dumbest all the fouls at the worst time. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, and the thing, Tibbs noticed. Tibbs coached him in Minnesota. <laughs> Tibbs <laughs> knows this. So. What's that, what's that, wait, that way? Let me throw it in. What's that relationship going to be like? You know? Like, you know? I mean, apparently they pieced it up like, 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 <laughs> like, like after Tibbs had left or something like that, they had pieced it up or something like that. Allegedly. Right. But, <laughs> but he he's playing for him again in New York, bro. This is not Minnesota. Right. New York. It's the Mecca, bro. It's the Garden. It's not Minnesota. So uh, Julius in the game game. Day, he... Say again. Julius in the game day, he... But he could though. Because even though he did the thumbs down and whatnot, yeah, he, 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 <laughs> was, he responded. He said he would play he would play good. Right. Again, 25, 10, and 5. That's true. That's true. But the playoffs again. That's a whole other. That's a whole. Other, that's a whole other story. But Jules could play, bro, and he was fine with this team. And um, but that that brings me back to Cat with his playoff performances and him not showing up and him playing in a much bigger market with a lot higher expectations. I don't know. I don't know if he can handle that. I don't know if he'll, he'll have a lot more. He'll have a lot more support as a team to, well, to make up for his, like mistakes and make up for like his like his shortcomings. Like the Knicks but, have the coaching staff. You guys have the coaching staff. Y'all got the right. Oh, hear, me out, though, bro. hear me out though, bro. Hear me out. Mitchell Robinson not gonna be there for the for the, until December. Maybe January. Mm-hmm. Knowing him, maybe February. Mm-hmm. Maybe March. Who knows? It's Mitch, bro. He always hurt. Mm. Towns is going to have to play that five for a lot of times. He don't got Rudy Gobert back. He don't got a, another rim protector backing him up. He, he he would have Mitch when Mitch is healthy, but for, these, care, first, for, for these first thirty or so games, these first couple months, he don't got Mitch back there, bro. Who is your backup? So, back the, up only, so the only thing I could I could see happening or hope to happen is that they start pressures down there. Presses down there at the four with them and just bring Josh Hart off the bench. Have who, who, who is the backup five for the Knicks? Jericho Mitchell's Sims. out. Jericho oh, Sims. they do it'd be, have. It'll be Jericho Sims. They... Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Jericho Sims. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it, I, yeah, I can, so it's it's in some ways we got better in this trade, and on the other hand, I look at this trade and go like, yo, I don't. I don't think it was necessary. Really? I don't think. It was I think it was necessary. We needed a five. Don't get me wrong. We needed a five. We needed a big. But I think there were a lot low. We should have traded Mitch first. That's my thing. We should have not- traded Mitch if anything, because Mitch's value drops every time he gets hurt, bro. Mitch's Mitch's value drops every time he gets hurt, and he's not getting any younger. So Mitch, Mitch should have been gone first. And we should have went after we, we should have went after another big after that. In my opinion, I can't tell him what. The other oh, okay, then, then, then let me ask you this. Let's look at the, the, the like the free agency and the market. That is the top five big, you would say top four big. None, and none of you guys disagree with that. Is the top five, top four big in the league right now? Oh, I, don't, I don't got. I don't got. He's getting paid like it. Sure. Uh, you know, hold on, hold on. You don't think that's top five? Top bro, I don't got time for rankings right now. I'm too. I'm, uh, ah. don't, don't stop me for this. I mean, I'm flowing right now, bro. Can I keep going, please? I just saying, Cat's a top five big man. I was telling Rick this a couple days ago. What other big man you guys that can compliment Brunson with his cat skill level and talent and ability? What other big man you guys can look that's out fair. for? That's fair. No, that's that's completely fair. Yeah. All right, so. That's, that's why I threw that question in it. That's why. 
Yeah, all I'm saying is he's not he's not fixing the five and the rim protection problem with no more Isaiah Hartenstein with no more Mitchell Robinson out. He's not fixing that problem. He's not a he's not a low he's not a, a paint anchor. That's not his game. Right. And so so yeah, bro. I, I'm not I'm I'm really not super happy about I'm not I'm really not super happy about the trade. I, I, I again I see him work I see him working in I see him fitting. Um, I don't think it'll be any problem with that, but it's just I'm still worried about the defense and the, and the, and the paint presence well, there. Well, let me say this before I swing to Johnny so you can bring his thoughts about the Timberwolves yeah, and Julius Randle. Before, before, before you swing into Johnny, I do want to talk about Jules for the for the Wolves briefly, though. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, say what you had to say, bro. Was, no, oh, no. All right, so this is what I was going to say about I feel like Cat is a, if, all right, if you ask me, let me ask you, who's the better player, Cat or Randy? Overall, player for player. Cat by hair. Okay, Cat by hair. Uh, Cat's the better player out of the two. He shoots better than Randall. Randall's so good saying that, honestly. I mean, but yeah. You, yeah, I, yeah. Ah, you, I can see why. It's, no, it's cat, yeah, I can see why. Hair, yeah. it, it really is technical. And this, I think Cat, defensively, yeah, he may. I, I think. Under this culture, that's why you guys got the culture and the right. Like you guys got guys that are one through four. Are that he he's seeing those guys play defense getting to their stances. He's gonna have to follow through. Brunson mm-hmm. to Anobi and Mikel Bridges and Josh Hart. You guys are set on the perimeter. Don't sure. get that twisted. Any sure, team you right, meet, sure. whoever the best scorer or the the number two scorer, Josh Hart or Mikel or OG, they got. It. I uh-huh. think Cat can hold some whatever five outside of Wendy, of course, or, or you know, I think you guys really aren't that much of a disadvantage defensively wise with Cat. In my opinion. you guys, what's the biggest difference defensively wise between Cat and Randall, in my opinion? Is it really just a, a major? You know what I mean? Is that really a major disadvantage? It's really not, but it's it's, a, it's different. It's different circumstances. Okay. Because because Julius Randall had Isaiah Hart. Einstein backing him up. Julius Randle had uh, when healthy Mitchell Robinson backing him up. So okay, that's fair. I'm I'm just saying for I'm, starting off for like the first until December or January, or whatever Mitch comes back, Cat is going to have to soak up a lot of those five minutes at the five and and hold it down. And I just have a little bit of doubt in that. That's all. That's fair. But I, but I, I I'm I'm. Open to it. like I want to see. I, it's not like I want to see him do bad enough. Like I want to see him do good. It's just like I got doubts about it. But before, uh, so yeah, but uh, yeah, so you can pass it off to Johnny. But just uh, I just want to talk about Julius Randle for me because I think he can actually be pretty good there because yes. the Wolves don't have outside of Ant really, and it showed even with Cat on the floor. They don't have a guy that can toss the ball to him. Just go, yo, get me a bucket. That's Julius Randle's game. And you talked about the spacing with him and Rudy Gobert. I, I can understand that, but Jules is still going to take and make, make threes. It's not it's not going to be at a, a super efficient clip, but he'll still take and make threes. Not to mention you got Dante DiVincenzo there now. Mike Conley still a knock still a knockdown shooter. Shooter Ant can shoot. Nas Reed can shoot. Um, Jaden McDaniels can shoot. They got guys. They got guys around him that can play that can complement him well and that can hide his weakness as well, whether it be offensively or defensively. So. Yeah, I, I think Jules. I think Jules could be pretty solid for for uh for Minnesota. I just wanted to say that, and da- definitely Dante too. He'll definitely find a role in there too. So I think, I think the Wolves uh made out fine on there and getting those two guys. Hundred and ten percent, Johnny. Explain it to you, my boy. Give us your full thoughts and analysis uh, on Julius Randle on the Wolves. And do you think the Wolves are more competitive in the West? Do you think they help themselves in the West? Where do you see them now with this trade in terms of standing in the West? Are they a top five team in the West with this trade? And you don't see much different with them? 50 hours? Uh, I give them... It's hard, to, I, I, it's hard to gauge, honestly, off the bat. But I will say this is an interesting little pop we have right here. Speaking from the Timberwolves standpoint, um, obviously you got Ann Edwards who's shooting for MVP this year. But outside of that, this Julius Randle edition, now I've always been a Julius Randle ranker as a sixer at heart. But we've always, we're we not too far from, you ain't too far from the turnpike. We hear the news and how his career has been going in the city of New York. And 
honestly, it's always been an up and down love hate relationship with those fans. And me personally, I always look at Julius like he's he's a guy that can contribute, but I feel like sometimes New York has put too much on him. Like you said, credit to him for being over there in those in, in those trash years, you know, laughable. But now he comes over to Minnesota, right? Now he's in a situation where he's got a better team to work with. I'm actually very, very interested, though. Like you said, 25 and 10 and multiple seasons here. All right, you got some people to work with. You mentioned Jaden Daniels. Um, me personally, I'm a fan of Alexander uh, Alexander Walker. I love Nas Reed. Ooh, yeah. Dante DiVincenzo's over there now. These guys were shooting. Um, Ant was shooting 46. percent He's he's in a mindset of where he can make these teams. Uh, I think he's going to come out. Anthony Edwards having to make this team better, but Julius Randle taking that pressure off of him, a healthier Julius Randle. Um, it actually can make the Wolves pretty interesting. I don't think they lost too much. I really don't. Um, I, I love the fact that they added Devin Shinzo along with that wing shooting um, of, with Jaden McDaniel, Jay Daniels and Alexander Walker. Um, I'm, I'm, interested, I'm interested to see how the uh, Wolves add this. Um, I wouldn't say they lost too much, but I think it's going to come down to Anthony Edwards making that team better. But Julius Randle, uh, I'm not going to lie, the knock has always been health with me with him. It's always been health, 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 health. Can he stay healthy this year? Um, Timberwolves are pretty low key deep, um, especially in the at the front court position. But I got to see a healthy as Julius Randle this year, and that's what's help is 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 what's hard to gauge what seed that they can place, whether they can be top five, top six, or bottom six. Um, I think it comes down to the healthiness of Julius Randle. But nah, bro, they ain't lose too much, man. I know y'all was sick about that though. Y'all definitely needed a center, but at the same time, I'm I am peeking over there at that uh Nick's backcourt, uh mainly in on the bench. Because the DeVincenzo coming over to Minnesota, who you guys got left over there in that backcourt? Miles McBride, he's nice. And who you guys got campaign? Play yeah, pretty man. well for us. Probably be the rookie, Tyler Kolick. You looking yeah, pretty Tyler thin Cole. over there. I, I like Tyler Cole. I like I like Tyler Cole. Y'all got a good rookie in him. He don't listen. Pay attention to him. He might have that middle quickly type of ride. Like oh, right. this guy right here, right? Young, young you got that Randy Chamney? Randy Chamney? Do you guys? Yeah, we Randy Chamney. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. There you go. A bunch of a bunch of ass and a couple of you know what I'm saying. And as far as that as far as that backcourt backing up, so that's what that's one thing I noticed with, with the defense Shinzo swing over to uh, Minnesota. It made me look in New York like, okay, well, what's that bench looking like for the backcourt? But other than that, yeah, I don't think the T Wolves lost too much. I'm interested. I'm interested to see how many games Randall play. Um, defense Shinzo, he's I think he'll step in pretty nice. I'm excited to see more minutes uh, for Alexander Walker, Jaden Daniels, Anthony Edwards. We'll see what Mase he kicks into. Um, yeah, bro, this should be all right. This should be all right. They won this trade, Johnny. Cause I, so far, it's like Knicks right now. Team Knicks. Good, team. Yeah, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna give it to the Knicks right now, just because it's it, there. It's easier to see where they can head. It's easier to see like they're they're not as foggy. Their future isn't as foggy as it is in Minnesota. I like the Knicks with this trade, like you said, slightly though. I wouldn't sleep on Minnesota, but not in the, um the Knicks won this trade, but Minnesota they got they got a little bit of the money's worth right there. I think it's a draft pick involved as well. Yeah, they and, do a and, protected, and just protected. Detroit's yeah. uh, first round yeah. in a couple years. It's a protected yeah. one, so. It was protected. But I will say this in regards to that. I think, and, and, and I said the next one, uh, but until, you know, I started looking at Julius Randle again, because, you know, you, you tend to forget when a guy's injuries away from the game, out the spotlight, you kind of forget what he was able, capable of doing, you know, and you remind him once again, that was a 25 and 10 and 5 guy before he got hurt. Right. So and then the Minnesota, a lot of people, Minnesota fans in general, I've been looking at the NBA circle and everything like that. They, they really don't understand why, but it's money wise. The Wolves is really financial wise. Cat was going I to, be to touch on that, too. Cat was going to be traded either this season or, you know, it was really he was, he was going to be traded. He was going to be set to get it, 50 million a year. Yeah. And you, you're paying a big man with Rudy. You got, you know, Got to pay Nas. Nas contract year. You're paying three big men over. You know, it's like once somebody had to go. Rudy Gobert's trade value wouldn't have been high. No matter if he's a defensive four-time player of the year. He's up there in age. Nas Reed, 
I like Nas Reed, but you know, you're not giving Nas Reed, right? So, Cat's the inventable. He's the odd man out. And he not had to mention Cat's uh, Cat's contract all the way up until 2029. So, so. and the, and you got to think too. If he played bad, let's say whatever happens this season, Andrew Reed can play bad. That's another year off the contract. But who's gonna want two years left? You're paying a guy like that six. You know, I mean, who, who wants to pay that? You know, yeah. so can't have to get traded. And that's what, and, and and I'm glad you brought that up, Colin, because that's been another aspect of it that's worrying me: the fact that his contract is so big. Oh no, no, you got the F. Don't get twisted. You took on that contract. That's your roster for the next three to four years. Yeah, unless you got. Yeah, it, he's got. He's got a player. Charlotte. Say again. Didn't Charlotte? But they financially, they, they, they. It was part of like a three-team trade scenario. Yeah, we gave it's him true. like we gave him like Case Beard a job or something like yeah. that. Right. Like oh, Daquan okay. Jeffries, is, I believe his yeah, name was. Yeah, yeah, something, something was that for like, like that. But, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a, like a few like second-round picks. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that that catch contract situation, bro. Like Jules' contract is up for a couple years, and he wanted an extension. He wanted an extension. And they try to get one. They try to get one for him. And, but my thing is, I wasn't trying to give Julius the contract extension. That really but, wasn't but, but, but like you're kind of inclined to, because Jalen Brunson took a pay cut for you to get his Nova Bowl from from uh, from Brooklyn. And, 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 and that's the part and, and, and that and got to, and and to, get, and to Julius exactly. But Brunson but, took but, the but, pay but, cut specifically for that. Yeah. So. That's why it was also weird to me because it's just like, all right, we we had Jalen take a pay cut, but we bring somebody in that's going to be his B or his 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 second option, and he he gonna be paid he gonna be paid sixty mil at, at some point. Like it's, I don't know, bro. A like, lot of money for a year for a guy. I was like, man, I don't know if I would get that, that, you know. But at the time, it makes sense because he's your number one pick. Has been playing like an all star since his rookie year. He's been averaging 20. You know, it's like, uh, I don't know. But you got that on that contract. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, Rick, what's your thoughts before, Johnny? What's your guys' thoughts before we wrap this up? Yeah, I'm still on the uh, yeah. Great points by everyone here too, and um, on both sides, the Knicks and the Timberwolves. Um. I think I'm just waiting right now to see because uh, originally what I had saw was I think the Knicks originally tried to trade uh, Randall and Mitchell Robinson, yeah. and I don't think the Timberwolves wanted that. And obviously it got to a point they had to do Dante DiVincenzo, um, so they had to put him in a deal. But I'm looking at – so, and we know like the Mitchell Robinson news. I'm just waiting to see – I was going to ask Kyrie this too. Um, if they do move on from him, like what would you want back – you know, his value to it, he always is her, but what do you think that they would probably get back for him or what would you want? Because we know Precious would be at the uh, he could, he's a backup big. I don't know, I, I don't know if they got out of faith there, they, they put some faith in with Jericho Sims. But what do yeah. you think about if they did move off for uh, Mitchell Robinson? And I'm also, I know this is how the team looks now, but you never know, maybe they got another move that they bring in from Mitchell Robinson and this deepens the bench a little bit more, you know, and yeah. so farther down the line. The team could also maybe get a little better. You got the trade deadline. They only got a few assets they could probably trade, and you got the buyout market. But uh, the Mitch Robinson part is a real key of, of what I'm looking for as a next move. I feel like the Knicks will have another move. What do you think about that, though, uh, Kyrie? Um, as far as Mitch going, bro, I said it earlier. Like he, the more he get hurt, the more his value come, his the value goes down. And I think his value was the highest maybe a year and a half, almost two years ago. Um when he was kind of at his peak, maybe earlier in this season, I mean, earlier last season also, when he was he was playing very good basketball. And um, the only thing you could really, like, complain to him about was his free throws. But yeah, um, it, it may be fouling at that. But I think Mitch played himself to be a, a, a key piece in a trade uh, in a trade scenario. But right now, I think his market is so down because any team getting him knows he's not going to be ready till December. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's been talks about like a guy like Nick Richards, like on the on the Hornets yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, um, he'd be good for you guys. I he'd like be, that. He'd, he'd be, be solid. I wouldn't be mad at him. Uh, he's his time tip of those teams. I, I like that fit. You guys Definitely. have to consider that. Definitely. Um, I, I can't really think of no. 
I really would love Isaiah Stewart from uh from the Pistons. The Pistons, yeah. Because because the other thing I look at this team and go and think is we don't got a goon. Like we don't got a we don't got a, a muscle. We don't got no when Julie's gone, we don't got no like no no enforcer. So, Julius was everything kind of like Jack of all trades, and he didn't hit it. Julius, well, a lot of people not going to realize how viable Jules was to the Knicks, not just this season or this past season, but like in general, his time. Yeah. Later, like years it's, later. It's going to definitely be understated. Definitely. Yeah. His time. Bro. But the Knicks fans, you guys will keep him alive. You know, the real Knicks fans, you guys will forever keep him alive. So I don't got no worry about you guys. He's fading away in the Knicks history. Because he definitely, like you said earlier in the episode, this guy was what you guys were, you guys were like. The bottom of the bottom, and year by year, you guys literally he be made y'all competitive. And Jalen Brunson, Ricky, Ricky brought up them, them Phil Jackson years when he first brought Derrick Rose over, bro. And I and like I just felt my my chest hurt a little bit because <laughs> he set us back like a decade, dog. No bullshit. Phil yeah. Jackson did you guys talk about Drake? I mean, he drafted Porzingis. <laughs> it just didn't work out. After that, it, 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 it just didn't not, work out. And, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Frank Nikina is wild. Nina. I still look back at that and say, "Ooh, we." Obi Toppin. I'll be topping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obi, nah, nah, listen, no, and you know what? I like Obi, I, I like Obi but he, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely, he definitely wasn't worth the age pick. Definitely wasn't. Um, but I will say this: uh, we had talked about this. Rick. We had talked about um, whether or not, or putting aside uh, Jalen Brunson making the sacrifices, I just feel like Cat's personality. Granted, it, it, it's like you said, Kyrie, at this point, New York is tough, man. Like, you got to be, like, I always said, at any team, Philly, New York, you can't be no weenie playing for you. You just can't. You can't be no weenie. And my biggest thing, and we're talking about the cat games. That's um, and it's just a lot of uncertainty, but I feel like one thing of me and Rick, like I said, leading to it, Cat was like a rookie coming in. No, maybe his second year when Tom Thibodeau was coaching him. Right? Like second, and, third year, yeah. Yeah, Cat was young, and Cat's 28 by the time 29. I like to think your frontal brain is fully developed, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm thinking him, you know, I, I like this for you guys. I really do. Hate y'all on Dante. You bench, you definitely got to look more into that probably going to see if maybe you could get Nick Richards or, like you said, Isaiah Stewart, probably another option. But you guys, in all honesty, as much as I talked trash earlier, you guys should be competing for the conference finals with title. Barry, any injury this time. Mm-hmm. But it's tough because I feel like this might be the year you guys got to spend that year building chemistry, you know, getting together, and hopefully you guys figure that out before All-Star break at least. Yeah. But you know, you guys are a top three team, top four or three team in the East, in my opinion. Definitely, hundred ten percent, no doubt, my mom. Sure, Can't, don't disagree. I'm, no doubt. We're we'll gonna talk about rankings next, uh, uh, next week's episode. We're gonna talk about predictions. Who are the surprise teams we have? The teams that we think are gonna disappoint us. That's all gonna be coming. But this concludes episode 171 of the Restricted Zone podcast. A hell of an amazing episode. Shout out to my co hosts, Kyrie, to Johnny, to Rick. Shout out to each and every single one of you guys. Hopefully, they enjoy this episode as much as we enjoy recording this episode. And like I said, you don't want to miss none of the episodes we're going to be dropping from now. Turn on the post notifications. Leave a like and comment, please. Just comment, talk to us what you think. If you disagree with any of us. You know, if you're a Knicks fan, I think the Sixers fan will kick your ass at any time point in the season. You know, talk some shit back to me. If you think you disagree with that, I'm all for it. I want all the smoke. Hey, the Kyle, is when on. that episode come, bro, this is no call it sick or nothing, bro. I, I <laughs> <didn't hear that. laughs> hey, man, it's the restricted zone, man. We coming in with everything. Restricted bro, zone. I need some Tylenol or something, some Robotussin or something, bro. You man, I, right listen, there. just send me some halal. Send me some gyro. That's all I want. That's all. <laughs> With that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Turn on post notifications. Check us out on Spotify. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. That concludes episode 171. We appreciate you guys. Love every single one of you guys. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.
Yeah.